Chinese cuisine has become popular in many parts of the world, and although often adapting to local palates, still remains a favorite social food experience. Often served in bite-sized pieces, using fresh ingredients and lightly spiced, it's no wonder the world can't get enough of the cultural flavors of China. A country that features various geographical regions from mountains to grassland, the food of China is very much influenced by location and local produce resulting in a variety of dining styles and flavors. China is a multicultural country and even the food, they got all different kind of culture. The style, the taste, the spices, like northern, they're more spicy and more like oil to cover to keep the food warm so they are slightly a bit of oil in there because of weather there and um, soften is slightly a little bit different mainly is the uh, opposite of the style it's clear less oil and less spices and because of that that's why the softened food can bring up more natural taste and less oil and not all the food are spicy and we soften put is concentrate on the natural of the food what it is you bring it out and you get that taste straight away originally from hong kong exo sauce is a very versatile condiment that will bring out the chinese flavor of most foods once made, it can be stored for some time and is an essential ingredient that all lovers of Chinese cuisine should have on hand. Exo sauce is uh, quite a magic sauce. Naturally, it's, uh, it uses some ingredients that are quite, can be expensive. It just can combine with any seafood, any meat, any vegetable dish and it can be stored in the long term in the fridge. That's why it brings a very rich taste and all the texture and they got so many different steps to make the exo sauce in the beginning but afterward you love it. Every dish you make you want to add exo sauce in there, just a spoon, tablespoon and you just bring out the flavour. It will take a little time to make the perfect exo sauce, but it is well worth it. You'll need several ingredients, some of which may only be available from selected Asian grocers. These include Chinese pickle and dried shrimp. Dry scallops need to be soaked in hot water for at least half an hour. garlic, red and brown onions, and bird's eye chilies are the other ingredients. Like so many great dishes, the first thing we need to do is chop some onions. First, remove the skin from a brown onion and then chop finely before placing in a bowl. Now grab a red onion and slice to a similar size as the first onion. Next, we need to chop some fresh garlic. About two peeled cloves will do. Now to add some heat to our recipe, finely chop about three small red bird's eye chilies and remove the stalks. So the last thing I need to do is the dry scallop. The dry scallop I put in the hot water and then steam it for about half hours. After I've done that, the dry scallop will become well cooked and easy to fall apart, so it's ready to cook. Once you've prepared your ok you can begin to cook. Heat your wok to a moderate temperature and then scoop about a ladle of oil into the pan.
Once the oil has heated up, place a handful of softened scallops and allow them to cook for about two minutes, stirring well all the time. Then, remove them from the oil and place them somewhere where they can drain. Grab a handful of Chinese pickle and add this to the oil. Stir this well and this time cook for five minutes before removing this from the oil and placing somewhere to drain. It is very important that you turn the heat down low now. To the oil, add your chopped red and brown onion along with a very generous sprinkling of dry shrimp. Stir the ingredients well. This part of the recipe will take a long time, but your patience will be rewarded as your resulting exo sauce will look and taste much better with time. After about half an hour, the ingredients should have cooked quite well and turned a dark golden color. Make a well in the oil and then add some chopped garlic and allow to cook for about one minute. Now grab the dry scallop and Chinese pickle that we cooked before and add this to the wok along with all the ingredients. Mix well and finally add some chopped chili. Your exo sauce can be stored in a bottle for some time and added to almost anything to inject a spicy taste of the Orient to your cooking. Traditionally, shallot cakes were a tasty and filling breakfast meal for peasants. They were cheap and easy to make and a great start to any working day. Shallot cake originally is from China and it's um, many is a history pancake bring along to this generation. And it's easy to prepare and for the parent it's a less worry of money to can afford it in the old day. They don't have that much money to prepare the breakfast every day with their expenses. And shallot cake is a simply crunchy and soft inside and a strong texture. And the main thing is help them to fill up their stomach almost half of the day. To make these traditional shallot cakes, all you need are a few very basic ingredients. To make the dough, you will need 500 grams of flour, 150 ml of boiling water, and 75 ml of ice water. Apart from a few pinches of salt and sugar, the only other essential ingredients are, of course, spring onion. Of course, shallots form the basis of this recipe, so the first thing we need to do is prepare some. Finally, slice your green onions right up to the leafy part and then put to one side for later. Take a large mixing bowl and pour in 500 grams of flour. Pour in a glass of hot water and give everything a good mix. Now we need to add a glass of ice water and then mix the flour and water really well until the water has completely been absorbed by the flour. Tip the contents of the bowl out onto your worktop and knead your dough together using your hands. After we roll it about 20 minutes, it seems to be okay. What we need to do is we cut it to like small pieces, like 20 pieces, and then we need to roll each pieces. And then after we roll it, we put some spring onion in. Using a pastry cutter or knife, cut out as many sections as you can. Put these to one side as we need to roll them out one by one. Flour your workbench before rolling out each ball like so. Then, grab the shallots you prepared earlier and liberally sprinkle a small handful down the middle of the pastry. Add a good pinch each of sugar and salt. Now comes the tricky part. First, fold one side to the middle, then the other side, make sure it overlaps with the first fold. Twist it around and then bend one end to the middle before bringing the other end back in on itself. 
Okay, let's look at that again. Fold one side of the dough over to the middle, then fold the opposite side over and make sure that it overlaps the first fold. Then take one end and bend it to the center like so. Do the same with the other end and then join the two ends. The final stage of preparing these tasty cakes takes place at the stove, so we will begin by deeply filling a wok with oil and heating to about 160 degrees. Carefully place each shallot cake into the wok and let them fry in the oil. The cakes should roughly take about one and a half minutes on each side. You can tell that the underside is ready as the cakes will begin to float. At this point, Turn them and let them cook until both sides are light golden brown. Finally, remove them from the oil and place them somewhere that the excess oil can drain. Your shallot cakes are now ready to serve. These delicious cakes are best eaten on their own with a little soy sauce for dipping and a pot of Chinese tea. A simple yet satisfying snack that is steeped in Chinese tradition and still tastes as good as ever. Coming up on Cultural Flavours, a unique and amazing eggplant treat that will have you coming back for more. Salt and pepper dishes are commonly found on the menus of most Chinese restaurants. Yet many Chinese chefs, eager to push the boundaries of their own cultural flavours, have begun to experiment with the core ingredient of this traditional dish. Well, when I present this eggplant to my restaurant, it's a bit harder at the beginning. We try again and again and again, millions of times. Some come up very great but cannot last longer crunchy and with the com combined with other vegetable is a choice of a vegetable is very important but uh, finally we got lucky we got the final touch with the crunchy pastry but after we invented and it will bring out most of the customer will love it because it's a history now from now on it's a history for salt and pepper eggplant it's easy to prepare it and it's easy to accept it and you will get addicted to it because it combined with the crunchy pastry and the onion, spring onion, capsicum. It's a nice combination. To prepare this tasty salt and pepper dish, you'll need half a red onion and a few spring onions. To add a peppery taste and some heat, you should have a red capsicum and two small red chilies. For ease, we've sliced some pre-made pastry, which we will fry later. Of course, you'll need one large eggplant. To create the batter, which we shall coat our eggplant with, we will use just 200 grams of flour, a little baking powder, one egg and a little water. Your first job when preparing this dish is to prepare your vegetables. Take a large red capsicum, slice it in half, and then remove the seeds. Slice the first half lengthwise, and then do the same with the other half. Put your capsicum to one side for later. Next, take a large brown onion, chop it in half, and then peel away its outer layers. Finally slice each half of the onion and place in a bowl. For this recipe, we also need to prepare a few spring onions. To do this, place them on a chopping board together and cut into large pieces like so and put these aside also. We also need to chop some garlic. A great tip is to place the bulb on its side and, with a very sharp knife, slice through its base. 
The bulb should fall apart, making it much easier to peel each clove. Once peeled, finely dice about three cloves of garlic and set aside. So now we, we finished prepared all the veggie here. The last thing we need to do is like plant. It's very easy. We just need to peel it and then cut it to the large trunch, a bit like a large potato chips. After we're done, we can bring it to cook. To peel your eggplant, slice off the top and then, with a potato peeler, remove all the skin from the vegetable. Cut the eggplant in half and then slice each section into very large chunks, like so. Now we can begin the cooking process, but before we do, we need to prepare a quick batter. To do this, simply mix one egg, 150 mils of water, around 200 grams of flour, and a little baking powder. Now whisk well until everything has combined and the batter has reached a consistency similar to this. Fill a wok with oil and heat on a high flame. You can make sure the oil is hot enough by dropping a few drips of batter in first. To cook the eggplant, dip pieces into the batter before placing them into the oil. Allow the vegetable to cook until they turn light golden in colour and this should take around three minutes. Then remove them from the oil and place them somewhere where any excess oil can drain. Now put a generous handful of sliced pastry into the oil and allow this to fry for about one minute only. Remove from the wok and place somewhere to drain. Put the oil from the wok into another saucepan, then place the wok back on the heat and throw in a handful of onion, spring onion, red capsicum and chilli. Keep stirring the ingredients for about one minute and as soon as they begin to release their aromas, add the cooked eggplant and sliced pastry to the wok. Finally, season well with salt and pepper and toss thoroughly to mix all the ingredients together. Tip everything straight out on a plate and your dish is ready to serve. Salt and pepper eggplant is a modern twist to a traditional Chinese favourite. It is delicious served simply on its own or as a snack with cool and refreshing beverages or as part of a complete Chinese banquet. Either way, it will not disappoint those willing to give it a try. Still to come on Cultural Flavours, we explore the wonderful world of Chinese essentials. The essential ingredients in Chinese cuisine can be broken down into a few categories. Herbs and spices, sauces and oils, rice and noodles and vegetables. Meats are used extensively in Chinese cooking, but often only in small amounts. The Chinese cook with an extensive range of vegetables, many that are common in all areas. There are of course some vegetables that are the mainstay of Chinese cuisine. We have to mention Chinese cabbage. There are hundreds of types of cabbage used in Asia, but by far the most popular is the Chinese cabbage, known as sui choy in China. You'll find sui choy in stir-fried noodles, dumplings, soups, hot pots and broths. Ginger is one of the key ingredients in traditional sweet and sour sauce and features in hundreds of Chinese dishes. Garlic has been adopted right across the globe as an essential part of the local cuisine and China is no exception. Originating in Asia, it is thought the Chinese were one of the first civilizations to cultivate garlic for food and medicine. Chili is often used to add heat to Chinese dishes. Rarely used fresh, whole ground chilies and chili flakes are preferred for their versatility. An extremely hot peppercorn, Shezuan, is generally used sparingly and is one of the five spices in Chinese five spice powder.
Ground nut oil is excellent for wok cooking as it can be heated to a very high temperature, sealing the food before it absorbs oil. Sesame oil is also a favourite as it adds a distinct flavour to the dish. Common right across Asia, soy sauce is also a staple of China and one of the most widely used ingredients. There are several types of soy sauce, with light soy being the most popular, although it is much saltier than the dark soy. For those Chinese lucky enough to live near the coastline, seafood and shellfish is a very important component of their food culture. Well, the scallop is itself is so natural, and all the seafood tastes. And that's why the, because of the exo sauce is quite rich taste. But after steam and let the scallop absorb the sauce, the combination is just perfect. And a dash of soy sauce on top, with rice rosini, then you have the soft, a little bit crunchy, and this is a natural seafood. It couldn't be easier to prepare these traditional Chinese scallops. You simply need some rice vermicelli noodles, some fresh spring onions and a dash of soy sauce. Of course, you'll also need some of the delicious exo sauce that we've just prepared to put the finishing touches to this dish. First, lay your scallops out on a plate. Now take a small handful of rice vermicelli noodles and carefully place it on top of each shellfish. Next, place a generous pinch of exo sauce on top of the vermicelli as well as some finely sliced red chilies. Your scallops are now ready to steam. We're using a commercial kitchen steamer, but you could use any steamer designed for use at home. Put the plate of scallops into the steamer for about two minutes. Then remove the plate and finally top with a few slithers of freshly chopped spring onion and a dash of soy sauce. Chinese scallops with exo sauce. An incredibly healthy dish that is so simple to prepare and yet bound to impress any guest at your next Chinese banquet. China is a huge country with many, many flavours and we have taken a tiny snapshot of the food from this vast country. The Chinese have developed a cuisine that's varied and healthy and features dishes developed over many generations. There are literally thousands of delicious and distinct cooking ideas that you can explore in your own kitchen. Cultural Flavors continues to explore the world through the diversity of food. From Sudan to Lebanon, Thailand to Nepal, let cultural flavors take you on a gastronomic journey so you can experience the tastes of the globe at home. Oh.